Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. I am so happy it's Friday today. And um, I'm coming to you, I'm Julie Hirschberg, the owner of Reactive Physical Therapy and Wellness, where we really focus our care, our passion on um, working with people with neurologic disorders and helping them improve their strength, their confidence, their movement um, through brain changing therapy and activities and um, and lots and lots of exercise. So um, one of the things that we do is a lot of education because we're really passionate about empowering other therapists, other people um, to help their patients even better. And um, last night we did one of our mini courses. We do these every six weeks as part of our Schmidt movement movement disorder fellowship and we have opened them up to the world and it was really fun last night to have about 20 different therapists online and then 10 different therapists in person as well to join us in a discussion about camptocornea that it was our most recent topic in in our course and what I wanted to do today really quick here is jump on and tell you a little bit about the discussion that we had um, some of the fun things and ideas that came up in it. Um, so I wanted to touch on three things. The first was some discussion about different pieces or types of equipment that came up in regards to um, improving people's posture if they have Parkinson's. Um, so we'll talk a, a little bit about equipment. I want to tell you about a really cool app that I found as I was preparing for this presentation. Um, it's called the Campdo app. And then um, finally, uh, talk a little bit about therapy intensity and what that might mean for helping to make changes in somebody's postures. So let's dive right in. First, let's talk about equipment. So I think uh, many physical therapists, many people, so if you've had a problem with posture, I know I have, and I've pursued different things, and there's often this kind of postural strap that people have and put it around their shoulders and, you know, online they claim to do amazing things and I've never really found a good one. Um, so we talked about things like that and I, I did recommend, and I'm not affiliated with this company at all, but there is one particular posture shirt that I have really liked and have found helpful for people with mild postural dysfunction. And it's from um, the makers in Teleskin and they have a posture shirt for men and women. They have posture bras. I I use it myself, really like it. Um, but I will uh, post links in our comments today for all of these things. So the Intelliskin shirt is something that came up. We also talked a lot about Surface EMG. And i really love to hear from you all if you've used this before. Um, we talked in the course about how helpful this is to determine the underlying piece of muscles either being overactive or underactive so that you can target that in treatment. So if you're using something, I'd love to hear what you're using and if you found it effective. Um, and if not, you know, why not? If you're a person with a postural problem, this would be a charge for you to, to ask for a little bit more and really understand if those muscles are activating as part of your posture. And if not, how do we get them activated? Or if not, do we need to pursue and look down the road of another diagnosis? So we use um, something called the Flexor Go. It's made by Healer Tech. It's a new company. Um, it's supposed to be very like entry level, surface EMG, inexpensive. And so we've been trying that out for a while. What's really nice about a new company is they're very responsive. If we have a problem with something, they're right on top of it, um, and I've met with a group of them um, here. Uh, they're based in San Diego, um, so that's a great resource if you want to look into it. Um, Healer Tech is the company, and again, I'll post um, a note, but we talked about Surface EMG. And then finally, um, I talked a little bit, and I, at the time we were in there, I couldn't remember the name of it, but it's called Gyro Coach. It is a laser. Now, I think a lot of us love using a laser head lamp. Um, and putting it on people's body parts and they have a line and it gives that external focus. It's a really, really great tool. Well, Wendy Stimson, she is a PT up in the Bay Area, 
said, that's great, but I want more. And she developed one that projects a laser line. So a horizontal line and a vertical line. Um, you could do one or the other or both and actually get that cross. And what's really nice then is that it gives feedback about your tilt. So if you have the laser just pinpoint light, you don't get that feedback about a tilt um, or even a tilt this way, right? Like a pelvic drop. So um, she was really generous and gave us one to trial out. And we've been working with it and I really love it. It's um, she also, the way she designed it with multiple different attachments. So you can put it on any limb, put it around the waist really easily. Um, again, I'm not affiliated with these companies, but these are just fun things that we have tried um, and used. And I know um, a lot of PTs would enjoy using them. So that's called Gyro Coach. So those were some of the pieces of equipment that we talked about creative ideas to use to help people with their posture. The second really cool thing, and I'll post the link here, is um, out of uh, a university in Germany, they created something called the Camp Do app, and it is available online. Um, I'll post a link to it, but very, very simple to use. Upload a picture, get it facing the right direction, and then you can measure the angle of the Camp Cornea. They developed this for use in their research studies, but it's so user-friendly and simple um, that I feel like I'm gonna use it all of the time for my posture measurements. The key pieces are labeling a C7, an L5, and then the lateral malleolus, so helpful to have little stickers probably for that, and then it measures the angle for you. Um, so when you look, so we presented a case yesterday um, with a gentleman who um, started out um, gosh, his exact number, I believe, was in 45 degrees. And after six weeks of therapy, he was at 29 degrees. So a pretty nice improvement. And you could visually see it, but it was nice to have the measurements of that. So um, that's called the Canto app. So I'll post the link to that as well. And then finally, I think this is where I got maybe the most fired up um, about is when you dive into the literature in Camptochormia, a lot of it is from Italy, which is cool. And so we talked about maybe we all need to take a trip to Italy and visit these folks that are doing these cool research trials, not just in Camptochormia, but they're doing stuff in Parkinson's. But what they're doing is intensive. Every day, like five days a week, 90 minutes a day of therapy. And that's how they're getting results. And we're just not set up well to do that. And I know there's been discussions um, in some other groups about doing that in freezing of gait and, and other things. And I think it is really where we need to go. I'm really curious to hear from other people um, if they're if they're able to do that, what success they found it, what, you know, I know there's some challenges, there's some barriers to it, but so many rewards. And um, we've done a few intensives um, in our practice here and definitely see the benefit. But honestly, I feel like we need more. Um, but that's a, that's a change, a change in our practice, in our scheduling, in all of those things. But I think when we look at the literature in specific to Camptochormia and Pisa syndrome, nobody's doing once or twice a week for six weeks and getting results. You know, they're doing really intensive bouts. And I think that's what we need. Um, so there you have it. That's three take homes. We talked about a lot of equipment helping us to give external cues and provide some extra support for improving posture. We um, saw really cool measurement apps, the like Camto app, and the literature from a summary standpoint. So we dove into, in our mini course, we talked about what that intervention includes, what's been shown in the literature, what we can do in patients. We talked through some case studies. Um, so we talked about the nuts and bolts of it, but the overlying piece was intensity, intensity of practice for, um, for people with Camptochormia. So um, that, that's just three little, little pieces of um, what we did last night. Um, we did record the mini course. So if you're interested in learning more, you can, um, you can grab that. I'll post a link as, as well. But it was definitely really um, fun to have people from all over the world joining us and commenting and um, sharing discussion. And I think you'd really enjoy that. And 
I want a big announcement because this is going to be coming out next week. Our weekend course is going to be opening up for enrollment. We are doing the course I've always dreamed about. Um, we are doing a course on complex regional pain syndromes, ERPS, and focal dystonia talking about the commonalities from a neuroscience perspective, pathophysiology, and lots and lots of treatment. So I'm so super excited. Brittany Kim, who is our orthopedic specialist who has been working with patients with neurologic disorders for her career, she, um, myself, are going to be teaching that course along with, I'm so excited about this, Alan Wu, who is a movement disorder specialist at UCLA here. He helps um, us in our fellowship program and is just phenomenal. So from a medical perspective, he's going to be talking about management. And then we also have somebody who specializes in chronic pain and CRPS from a physician standpoint, and that's Dr. Laura Edinger. So she's gonna be joining us for that weekend course. It's October 12th and 13th. It's gonna be in person here in Torrance, but we're also going to have it available to people to join in live online, which I'm so excited about. We trialed that out in our last course um, when we had Mike Studer here, and it worked. So um, we're going to do that for our next course as well. So if you are interested, um, shoot me a line. I'll save you a spot. It is going to be a very small course so that we can have it really interactive um, in person. So I'm so, so excited about that. Um, so thanks so much for joining me on a Friday. I will post links to all of this stuff up in our comments. And um, of course, if you have questions, shoot me, um, shoot me a comment here um, or an email. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. We will see you next week.